I'm Luke Hegarty from the State Capability Team with another update relating to EMCOP and FireWeb. So a few weeks ago I spoke to you just when the changes were about to occur with EMCOP and FireWeb, so it was the launch of EMCOP uh, and FireWeb was migrating to what we call the cloud-based environment, so there was changes to the way that you uh, access that. So where have we got to in the past uh, month or so? Well, EMCOP launched. We've now used that quite regularly to issue warnings to the community. So our public information officers and information and warnings officers have spent a lot of time in the system and started to familiarise themselves with it. And we've also started to see a lot of collaboration with other agencies, so not the responder agencies that we would normally see in these systems, but local governments, uh, Department of Health and Human Services, those sorts of agencies are certainly logging in and keeping quite a uh, good uh, awareness of what's occurring uh, through the incidents that have been created in EMCOP. In the last couple of weeks, there's been a decision made that the incident feed was going to be turned off to the EMAP system, which a lot of you uh, have become familiar with over the past few years. So turning that off means that EMCOP is now the primary situational awareness tool that's going to be the mapping environment where you'll see the incident uh, feeds appear on the screen and you'll still be able to use all the other layers that you're familiar with in EMAP. That came about a little bit faster than we initially expected. Uh, that's okay though. Uh, EMCOP is certainly uh, running those same feeds. Uh, we were hoping that people would have a bit of a chance to familiarise themselves and transition across slowly over summer. The reality now is that it's time to jump on board with, with EMCOP. Uh, and EMAP is not the tool to use anymore. The one uh, thing to be aware of is that some people have got in touch saying there's some printing issues with EMCOP. Primarily the tool's meant to be something that's displayed on a screen, but there are people who have over the years uh, got into a, a routine where they would print off a map of the area that the fire is occurring on a plotter, nice A1, A0 type uh, map, and then scribble on that. So the best way to achieve that is still going to be through using EMAP for the moment. EMV are working on some developments in EMCOP to make the printing functionality a little bit better. Now, if you haven't had a chance to get into either of those systems yet, just a reminder, the way to register is by initially creating a members.cfa email account, or if you're a staff member using your CFA email account to sign up, that's for both FireWeb slash EMAP and for EMCOP. Uh, if you need more information about the members.cfa email accounts, through Brigades Online you can search for a document called Office 365 Accessing Volunteer Webmail. That'll give you the instructions on how to set that up. That's your key to get into these systems. So if you haven't uh, crossed step one yet, get that done and then move on to registering at fireweb.ffm.vic.gov.au or cop.am.vic.gov.au. Some people have also got in touch with the FireWeb service just when they've tried to register for FireWeb and they may already have accounts, so they're just not sure of what their username is. They want a password reset. So you can come to the CFA team in the first instance to clarify whether you've got an account and that email address is fireweb-applications at cfa.vic.gov.au. Get in touch with us. We can save the hassle of going through the service desk. They'll have to... Uh, check the system as well. So it saves a bit of uh, running around uh, for the DELP staff as well. If you are running into issues though with your FireWeb account where you just can't log in, you've forgotten your password, then that's definitely uh, an issue for the FireWeb service desk and that email address to get in touch with them is fireweb at delp.vic.gov.au. Also, on another point with FireWeb, you might find that if you do get in touch with the service desk, they may still refer you back uh, to the CFA state capability team. That might just be for us to uh, confirm that an account's required or they'll seek some clarification uh, just so that they've got the records right at their end. In terms of EMCOP, uh, you'd be familiar that there's auto an automatic registration process for anyone with the CFA email account. So that gives you, well, when you follow the registration process, that'll give you automatic uh, read only access. Some people, particularly those who are working in IMTs, need to upgrade that to read-write access. What that means is you can collaborate with other users, uh, you can uh, draw in the incident rooms, and you can share information. 
what you need to do with that is to, uh, under your name in EMCOC, click on that and request uh, a role change and change that to read write user. That comes to the state capability team and we're trying to process those requests as they come through and we're doing that based on what's in the Chief Officer's endorsements list. So sometimes where we get a name that we can't see on the list, we'll have to run back uh, through the district or the region to confirm that we need to do that upgrade of access. So we certainly don't want to stop people from getting access to the system, but we want to make sure that people have got the right level of access into the system. Some people have also applied for the role of GIS user in EMCOP. Now that's a role that we're uh, keeping for mapping officers. So we're actually going to manage that through the uh, spatial information services team at Burwood uh, to run that uh, process with the mapping officers that they've got on their list. So we'll uh, allocate that access to people. And for public publisher as well, which is the uh, role for people who are issuing warnings, if you haven't yet got that access and you think you need it, then talk to your local public information section coordinator so that they can uh, work you through the steps to achieve that. The other area that we've received a lot of uh, requests around and applications for the systems is display accounts for use in LCFs, uh, MCVs, FOVs and district command centres. So we've now created with EMV accounts for LCFs, uh, MCVs and FOVs. That's on top of the existing accounts that have been generated for ICCs and RCCs. They are display accounts. What that means is there's one account per facility. There's, that means only one person can be logged in at any time and they are read-only accounts. You won't be able to alter the access level for those accounts. They are set as display only. They're meant to be on the screen at the front of the the room uh, for everyone to see, uh, to keep track of what's happening. If you're looking to collaborate or to have a, an account that you can use from home, then certainly recommend that you follow the steps to register yourself uh, through the normal process uh, using your members.cfa address. Just be aware um, that if someone does try and log in with one of those accounts, it will bump out the existing user. So. Um, bit of discipline required to make sure that we don't run into any issues there. The other point just to make quickly, for those of you who do use FireWeb and EMAP in particular, it's been a change. You used to have to log in to EMAP by typing fire backslash and then your username. That's now flipped over to FFM backslash in your username. It is on the front page of uh, EMAP, uh, but just in case you've missed that, that is one of the more common issues that we're running into with people who aren't up to speed um, with those changes. So we will uh, distribute a list to operations managers of those LCF, ICC, uh, MCV, FOV uh, account details. If they're not right, if you think you need a second account, anything like that, get back in touch with us. We'll work with EMV to achieve that. We are going to ask EMV to create uh, some district command centre accounts as well so that we're consistent and everyone's got a similar login uh, across the state. And if you continue to have any issues, you've got the COP uh, support uh, service available. So EMV have got some people employed to support the introduction of EMCOP so you can get in touch with them. Details uh, are on the front page of EMCOP. Otherwise, get in touch with us with any suggestions you've got or any major concerns uh, you've got with the system and we'll get back in touch in another month or so to see where we're at during the season and how EMCOP and FireWeb are going.